So any other questions? How come when it rains there's so many lizards? Well, that's because they because they pop up when it they the um, the tiger salamanders. They're they're black with the greenish blotches. Look like lizards or whatever. Yeah. Oh yeah, because the tiger salamanders are common, often commonly called lizards. They're not actually a lizard. They're actually an amphibian. Oh, yeah. So they need to keep their skin moist, like pretty much every other amphibian needs to have moist skin or they'll just die because they do a little bit of breathing through their skin um, and they're just not adapted well uh, to desiccation. So if they come out on a sunny day like this, they'll die. I mean, they'll last a couple minutes on a road in these temperatures. Whereas if they wait until nighttime or after a rain, uh, they can happily go and find food and find mates um, because they, they do eat fairly large things. And they, basically it's just so that they don't dry out. Because the only lizard we have in Saskatchewan is the horn lizard, which is um, you you can see them in the park. They're they're uh, they're hard to find because they're they're little gray things that don't look like a shape that you're expecting an animal to be. Just take a pail of water, right? Yeah. And throw it up. Yeah. Well, then then the salamanders will come up, but the horn lizards don't like the rain because they like they like heat, hot and dry, and so you only ever see them on on the bare uh, substrate. So anywhere where you find umbrella plant, you'll usually find horn lizards. So yeah, they're pretty neat. We actually, in the West Block, my wife went out and she found a whole bunch of them pinned to a fence by a, a shrike the other day. Mm. Eleven horned lizards. <laughs> endangered species taking on another endangered species. Yeah. And they're blaming farmers. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the shrikes. I keep trying to tell her there. She, she worked on shrikes for a while. But yeah. Uh, no, it's um, it's an interesting it's an interesting place, and it, it's really neat to watch the interaction, you know, to, especially with rangeland. I uh, a lot of this habitat is actually made a lot better, from in my opinion, by grazing. I mean, horn lizards, as soon as it starts to grow grass, they leave. Um, same with spadefoot toads. Same with a lot of these, like these guys, the little ones, the little uh, pocket mice. They need open space. They don't like grass. Grass gets in their way, and uh, when things get in their way, they get eaten because they're slow. If I can catch them, then anything can catch them. <laughs> so, yeah. But well, once they move out, the moles will move. In. Yeah, and then yeah, then there's other critters that come in and replace them. And it's it's that it's, the thing is, we've we've changed the ecosystem to an extent, so we can only do our best to manage it correctly. And this area was historically grazed and it was historically burnt. But cows fill that role quite nicely. And so you can maintain the correct sessional stage um, by doing that. I mean, one of the healthiest bits of prairie I know of, I, I've spent, I spent the last 10 years in Manitoba, um, was around Shiloh, and the range is there. Mm -hmm. And that's because those dummies use live, live rounds all the time with tracers in them. And they start like 20 grass fires a summer, just in their little section. But it's perfect for the wildlife. Some of the best spots for snakes and lizards are in that area where they do allow some grazing and there's there's regular fire activity. It's actually a little unnatural how regular the fire is, but uh, in these, there's a lot of range management that actually fits really nicely into classic range management. Things like grazing are important parts.